With iOS 18 literally around the corner, there are some amazing things that your current iPhone can do that a lot of people overlook. So even though we don't have the Apple intelligence yet, there's some tips and tricks I'm going to share with you that a lot of people are always missing or overlooking on showing you clever ways to best use your device to its full potential. Let's begin with the Map app. You can single-handedly operate the zoom in function by simply double tapping and move your finger in and out like so. But if you look at it and you launch something like Google Maps or other third parties, you'll see you'll be able to do the exact same thing even on some of your popular favorite ones like Google Maps. Now when listening to your favorite songs, either in your car or with over to your headphones and etc. If you like to transition from one song to be smooth with the next track like this, This is all built into your Apple Music section. If you like this smooth transition, you will need to go in your iPhone settings and scroll down until you find the Music app right here. And then in the Audio section where it says Crossfade, enable this and you can set the duration on how many seconds you want it to transition from the next track. I find the best result is 4 seconds. And then since we're we are here. If you like to adjust the EQ settings, you do have pre-made EQ settings to select from. And you can have music playing in the background while you're adjusting it to your preferred EQ setting of choice. So if you have like third party headphones or a sound system you're listening to your music from from your phone and you find that it needs a little bit of a bass boost, you can literally check mark increase bass right there. Now when using the message app, and if you're trying to send like a voice memo, instead of selecting here and tap on audio to start a voice memo, don't do that because it just required like the first few seconds. Did you know by picking up the phone and literally resting it next to your ear, it will immediately start a voice memo. And if you look back, it ends the voice message right then and there. It can hit send all automatically. And then we should all be familiar with the shake to undo ability when typing up a message. This is cool and all, but if you want pro tools to become available, use three fingers and just tap anywhere on the screen and the smart toolbar on top will appear, which will allow you to undo, cut, copy, paste, or redo as well. Now, when using photos, where you typically will feature your pets, yourself, or anybody that you took a photo of in your people, pets, and places, by selecting here, and we select a face as an example, if you tap on the three dots over here, you can select zoom in face. This way, all the subjects are zoomed in on the face where the face recognition is taking place in. Instead of just showing the whole photo of other people in the shot, and it's kind of hard to see which shot is the one you're looking for. Now we should already be familiar with the swipe up gesture, of course, and you have the ability to open up app switcher just like this. But did you know you can always let's do this to switch between the previously open app or very old open app, just like that. You could also find a similar feature in Safari. So long as you have the Safari search result on the bottom, not on top. If you see it on top, you need to go into your system settings real quick. As you are required to reverse back to the new Safari update and go in the Safari tab and go on the very bottom, select tap bar on the bottom. Now if we launch Safari, you have these little tabs you could quickly just switch between one or the other just like our gesture control down here because if we go and redo the single tab we do not have that ability unfortunately that's one of the benefits of this newer tab versus the old tab so the calculator app yes it's available here in control center of course if you long code you'll see that you do have the ability to copy the last result if you're trying to move something to a different document so you could literally just do that and then hit paste on like your notes and such. But in the calculator app itself, if you pull it up here, if you long code, you'll see you also have the copy last result ability as well. Now, whenever picking up a phone call, if you bring out control center, you'll find your microphone settings right here for that phone call where you have standard voice isolation or wide spectrum, which will basically capture everything in the background. But voice isolation works extremely well, especially if you find yourself in a crowded environment with a lot of background noise and you're on a phone call, enable this, your call will have no idea that you are in a crowd of people. And you also will find video effects too, because if we end this call real quick and you're in a FaceTime call as an example, you'll find these same microphone features to check mark voice isolation, 
but in video effects you'll be able to also change the portrait studio lighting or even remove those uh, little reactions by doing the peace sign and such like that so you have these two tools right here it's also found on ios 18 as well just slightly redesigned now, I'm sure when you're trying to update all your apps, like in the App Store, you may think it's easier to just, I had a hard time looking <laughs> looking for the App Store. Uh, you may think it's easier just clicking on the App Store itself and then go into your profile and then go to purchases just to find the update tab. Don't do that. The best method to go into the update tab is just by hitting long hold. Here you can not only search, redeem, updates, or find your purchases, but you can tap updates right here it'll, and it'll immediately take us to that update tab I was showing you earlier. So even though I have automatic update enabled, you see it's not really automatically updating. I know it's doing this to preserve battery life, but I think it updates like every, it checks for updates every once, every two days or something like that. But here you can manually just select update all instead of individually just updating apps. And then if you have an iPhone that supports this, when you launch the camera app, if you tap on the one, you have access to focals. Now this is an iPhone 14 Pro, so unfortunately we do not have this ability. My iPhone 15 does have that ability, so if we switch to photos and you keep spamming one, you'll be able to switch between the different focal lens right here. And if you don't see this, you need to simply go on to your phone settings and go into the camera tab. And since we are using a phone on iOS 18, it's the same thing. You just tap on camera and look for main camera. And here you can enable the default ones. You like to switch to by default whenever you tap on it, or you may decide to disable it all entirely. Now this next one is location services. Uh, apps like Instagram, Facebook, CarMax even, they don't need to know your precise location. And fun fact, majority of the time when they have your precise location, even though you turn off tracking, since they have your precise location, they could still make money off your profiles from your search habits or locations you've been taking photos at, like on Instagram, to sell that information to data brokers, which will make like target ads for people in those general areas, even though you're being anonymous. This is what I mean. It's always good to go into your phone settings and go into your main device settings over here in the overall settings and select like certain apps you just you know for a fact they'll need this type of information. So just go into privacy and security and in the location services tab, look through here and see what app is using what. But even though I have Facebook only enabling my location while using the app, it's still good to go in here and disable the precise location. This way they don't know exactly where you are at. And Instagram, I have never, so I don't have that precise location ability there. But even like some third-party apps like Rocket Homes, as an example, they don't even know my precise location. When I'm just viewing a listing, I'm just viewing that general area. So if it's a zip code I'm not familiar with, find my zip code is perfectly fine to get me that zip code I need. But they don't need to know exactly what street I'm located in type of thing. So it's good to just go in here once in a while. And there you guys have it. Those are some amazing tips and tricks and some cool hidden features that you should definitely know to really allow you to get the best experience out of your device. Thank you guys so much for watching.